Well, good afternoon, everybody, from Eureka at home. And uh, it's me, Ian the Storyteller. But today, I'm not at home. Today, I'm getting some exercise. And uh, you probably can't quite make out, but I'm on a canoe on the canal. And I'm out uh, getting my little bit of exercise because this week's story, or the theme of this week's story, is all about energy and my good friend uh, Professor Pumpernickel is going to do you a little video about energy and my friend uh, Mr Bridgins is going to do you uh, a little uh, video all about energy and I thought I would tell you a story whilst at the same time getting rid of some built up energy by having a little paddle along the canal to bring you this lovely story and I'm in a very lovely place uh, today and uh, if you uh, just trying to turn the boat round and see if I can show you, but behind me uh, there's a mill and that's all about energy as well. Taking water and making power to, uh, to fuel industry. But my story is not about a mill. My story is all about a boy and his canoe. And the story goes a little bit like this. You see, once upon a time, a very long time ago, it might surprise you to know there was no sun in the sky. So the days and the nights were just the same. There was no light. It was always, always dark, you see. And so people used to spend quite a lot of their times huddled around fires trying to stay safe. You might be wondering to yourself why they felt unsafe, you see, gathered together in great numbers around their fires. Well, the reason that they felt unsafe was the Tanifa. Now, you've probably never heard of Tanifa before. I can tell you what they are. They were spirits. Spirits of darkness. And they would rise up in the darkness in great numbers and try and catch humans that were unaware, that were caught out all by themselves in the dark, you see. Hence the reason people gathering together. Well, Tanifa, they like to take people and devour the soul inside the person, you see. And so people guarded against the Tanifas as much as they could. Well, let's put the Tanifas aside for one minute and let's talk a little bit about the boy and his canoe. You see, there was once in that land of darkness, a village where a great many people lived. Now in that village, the greatest honor was to be a hunter. And each day the hunters Men and women who proved their worth in catching prey like fish, rabbits, to feed the people in the village. They would take their boats down onto the great river and they would paddle their boats off to bring back food. Well, there was always an argument amongst the hunters as to which hunter was the greatest. And after a while of arguing, the hunters came to blows. Well, the leaders of the village, they couldn't let it go on any longer. And so they gathered. They had a great meeting. And they decided a plan. A plan that would put an end to the answer. Who was the greatest hunter of all? So the next day, the leaders of the village, they gathered together with the hunters. And they said, right, tomorrow, we're going to put an end to the argument. We're going to ask all the hunters to gather together down by the great river and we're going to have a race. And we're going to see which hunter can paddle the longest down the great river. Well, you might not think that that was a particularly difficult task to do. But when you consider that all the hunters knew that in the darkness, alone on the river, the Tanifa would be out in great numbers, sniffing out their souls. 
And so to travel down the great river, far away from the village, was a very dangerous thing indeed. Well, the next day came. And indeed, there on the river, with their boats, was a great crowd of the finest hunters the village had to offer. Well, the hunters in their great numbers put their boats on to the flowing river. But amongst them was one young man. In fact, he'd just come of age. He'd just proven his worth as a hunter. Well, he wasn't the biggest of hunters, nor was he the strongest of hunters. But you could say he was wise, wise beyond his years. And that is because he listened. Now, well, that young hunter the previous evening had spent a night by the fire talking to his dad. Now his dad, he was an old man now, but he'd not forgotten the many things that he'd learnt. And he said to his son, listen, you know, sometimes being strong helps, but often using your brains is what's most important. Remember the old saying, slow and steady can often win the race. And so that day, armed with those words, the boy, amongst the rest of the hunters, he climbed in his boat and waited for the race to begin. All of a sudden, a great horn was blown and the hunters, they put their paddles into the water and they started to pull. For the great strong hunters, their muscles bounding, set off hard down the river. And the boy, the young hunter, soon found himself left behind. But again, he just heeded the words of his father. Slow and steady can often win the race. And it wasn't too long before those muscle-bound hunters, they grew tired. They used up all of their energy but the boy who conserved his, well, he started to pick up pace. And it wasn't too long before he started to pass some of those bigger hunters behind. And they, knowing that they'd lost, turned back to the village. But all, not all were put off by tiredness. Some of them were put off by fear. Because you know, as they paddled further and further away from the safety of the village, they became aware in the darkness, away from the safety of the fire, fires, that the Tanifa were gathering all around them. And so some turned back uh, to return to the safety of the village. But not the boy. The boy paddled on slowly down the river, passing one warrior after another, until eventually he realised he was out in front. Everybody else streamed along the river behind him and he started to build in confidence and he started to pull his boat harder and harder through the water. In fact, suddenly he forgot all about the wisdom of his father and the wisdom of his years. He started to gloat. But his problem was now he was all alone. And as his wits came back around him, he could hear in the darkness of the bank of the river, the Tanifa creeping and crawling towards him. And his fear started to grow. And he suddenly realised he was all alone and would need to do something to defend himself. Well, he looked ahead of himself down the river and he noticed that there was a shore, a pebble-lined shore, and an idea came to him. But the boy, he picked up pace, and he used all his energy to pull that canoe onto the pebbled beach. He dragged his boat out of the water. He looked around himself for sticks. And when eventually he gathered enough together, he lit a fire. And the heat of that fire and the light that it gave off, it just about kept the Tanitha at bay. But the boy knew that he couldn't keep that fire lit 
all night. And so, an idea came to his mind. As he looked in the darkness, the light of the fire was glinting on the pebbles on the shore. Well, in the time of this story, people were never too far away from magic, you see. And the boy, he started to pick up the glowing pebbles and put them into his canoe. And when he had it filled to the brim with the glowing stones, he climbed on top of the pile, pushed the boat back into the water and started to row. Well, he knew, like all of the hunters knew, the stories of his tribe. And he knew that there was a place at the end of the river where it was so black, the river became the sky. Well, if only he could paddle his boat hard enough to hit that point, you just never, never know. Pulling harder and harder through the water, eventually the boy could see the place where the river met the sky. He could feel the tanifer hot on his neck. And so he used what little energy he had to push that little boat as hard as he could. And there magic did lie, for he felt the boat moving, but not now through water, upwards, up, up, up into the blackness of the night sky. But the tanifer, they're not landbound. They can move as easily through air and water, and so they too followed him. And that's when he played out his plan. He stopped his boat, he put his hand down into the boat and pulled out the glowing pebbles that had been heaped by the fire. And then he threw them, he cast them out across the sky. Well, the light that came from those pebbles was eternal. And the Tanifa, they screamed in fear, for suddenly light was all around them. And they retreated back to the places where the Tanifas lie. The boy could now steer his boat by the light of those stars in the sky, each one showing him the way home. And in the distance, he made out the fires of his village and he knew he was safe. And he was just about to turn his paddle and push that boat to home when he noticed there was a great rumbling sound. And as he looked above him, he could see it was the Sky God. Well, the Sky God came with a rumble of thunder. And you know the boy, he bowed his head in fear that the Sky God may be angry for him littering the night star sky with stars. But as the sky god came, you could tell that it wasn't a rumble of thunder. That sound was the sky god's laughter. And he threw his arms around the young hunter and said, my son, your wisdom has saved all of humankind. You've lit up the dark night sky. And from now on, Nobody will be lost. But because you've done that, I fear I should play my part. And so, I shall create a great star in the sky, bigger than the rest, that will bring light at daytime and warmth to people's lives. And you, my son, well, you have saved the night time, so the Tanifa can never prey on you ever again. And you know, that young man, he thanked the Sky God. And true to his word, the Sky God, he made the sun. And humankind had nothing to fear from the Tanifa anymore. So I'm very doubtful whether you've ever seen nor heard of them before. But you can remember this story and a time when they did move amongst us, trying to take our souls. But the boy, when he slowly paddled, back to his village. Well, well, he smiled wide because he could see that all of his friends had come together to celebrate him and to call him the greatest hunter 
that ever lived. And you know, that hunter, he had a name. His name was Orion. And you know, well, he's still with us, Orion. You can see him up in the night sky. If you turn your lights off and the clouds part, you can see his belt and his great bow and his great sword at his side. But you can also look up at him and remember this story. And that, dear friends, is the end of that, because I'm about to reach home after my journey down the canal on my canoe. So I hope you've enjoyed the story this week, all about energy. Maybe you could use your energy for good, or at least just get out there and get some exercise, if nothing else. That would be good, wouldn't it? But, um, well, I'm going to hang up now, and I'm going to go inside and uh, dry my hands. And I'll be back with you in a se little second, because... Uh, I've got a little riddle for you. Ta-ta for now. Well, hello chaps. I'm back inside the boat now and I've dried my little pixies and I've changed my shirt because uh, my other one was wet. Um, so I promised you a riddle. Now, uh, Eureka at home uh, have asked us to uh, record these videos and they've also offered a little competition. So my riddle is a little competition. If you joined in last week, you may have been the winner. The prize is a family pass to Eureka in Halifax. You can take the entire family. And uh, I think there's goodie bags as well. But what you've got to do, this is how it works. I'll ask the riddle. And if you think you know the answer to the riddle, put the answer in the comments box below this video. And uh, we'll put all the names, all the people who get it right, we'll put them all in a hat and we'll draw one out. And we'll do it each week until eventually, hopefully, we're allowed to go outside and play together in the sunshine. And I'll see you down at Eureka. So here's my little riddle, uh, what my wife Jo got for me. Uh, and uh, it goes like this. Never resting, never still, moving silently from hill to hill. It does not walk, run or trot. All is cool where it is not. What is it? So there you go, there's a little riddle. You can have a little think about that. If you know the answer, I think you know the answer, in the comments box below. And uh, share it with all your friends as well, because it's a good little riddle, and I hope you've enjoyed the story. So thank you very much for listening. Much love, much light to you all, and we'll see you very soon.